But right now, we're also getting a clear indication of the impact of Israel's overnight strike on Iran. Satellite images obtained exclusively by CNN show no extensive damage at an Iranian airbase believed to be the main target. CNN's Nick Robertson reports uh, direct attacks by the two countries appear to be over, at least for now. Ambiguity, not escalation. Iran's response to explosions in the sky near an Isfahan military base, several hundred miles south of Tehran. Events under investigation read nothing to see here. The objects were suspicious and our defense system acted swiftly. Thank God there were no major issues. Satellite images exclusively obtained by CNN appear to support damage on the ground was minimal. U.S. officials informed of an unspecified Israeli strike just hours before Iran's air defenses went on alert in the early hours of Friday. Iran's response, an anti-Israel rally, manifesting on the streets of Tehran, where large crowds can only gather when sanctioned by the government. Another indication. For now, it's anger contained to shouting, not sending missile salvos as it did last weekend. Yes, I can. Approximately 350 drones, crews and ballistic missiles fired at Israel following a deadly strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus almost three weeks ago. Mostly intercepted without major damage. <laughs> The Prime Minister, shunning allies' calls to take the win, vowed to strike back. Now, ambiguity, deafening silence from Israeli officials, except for an illuminating online spat. Hard-right cabinet member Itamar Ben-Gavir posting on X, lame. Quickly lambasted by centrist opposition leader Yair Lapid. Never before has a minister in the defence cabinet done such heavy damage to the country's security. It's unforgivable. The stakes had appeared extremely high. Iran's foreign minister in the moments before the attack promising instant devastating retaliation. And I think we first started to get an indication that there wouldn't be retaliation just a few hours after the strike. I spoke to a regional intelligence source at the time, well-informed, well-connected, and his assessment at that time in the early hours of this morning was even then that Iran was, wasn't going to retaliate. And I think that's obviously what we've seen happen through the day. They're, both sides seem to have sort of taken a strategic off-ramp here. But the red lines that were crossed that got both sides into this situation are now blurred, and I think, you know, the war really fundamentally, the tension between the two countries hasn't really changed. Um, what has happened is, for a moment, it seemed that the sort of the cost of an escalation, a real regional conflict uh, and, and bloodshed, that came a bit closer. Um, that's perhaps receded, but I think everyone has had a much closer and better look at just how quickly you could get to that type of escalation. But ambig ambiguity for now, and perhaps both sides can take a win domestically out of this wolf. We will see. Uh, Nick Robertson in Jerusalem, thank you very much. Uh, joining us now, staff writer for The New Yorker, Susan Glasser, and New York Times White House and National Security Correspondent, David Sanger. His new book, by the way, is entitled, there you see the cover, New Cold Wars. Susan, let me start with you. Do you think this is the end of the retaliatory strikes between Iran and Israel, or do you think there are more to come? Well, Wolf, I suspect the sound you hear is the sound of a lot of people exhaling cautiously right now in the region and here in Washington. I think there was a, a lot of anxiety ever since last week's unprecedented Iranian strike from their territory directly into Israel, several hundred missiles, drones. As you know, they were basically all shot down, but still an enormous barrage, and Israel did not seem to be listening to counsel from the Biden administration uh, to avoid, you know, take the win and uh, avoid keeping this cycle going. But perhaps the muted nature of the response to this strike suggests that for now it's over. But frankly, I, I just feel like we're entering a new and very dangerous phase in the confrontation between Israel and Iran, even if this round is over. Interesting. Uh, David, in your important new book uh, entitled New Cold Wars, you argue the West underestimated both China and Russia. Do you fear the U.S. is also now underestimating Iran? 
You know, my biggest fear out of this one is that it was the Israelis who may have underestimated uh, Iran, oddly enough, given their fixation on Iran throughout. Uh, they did not calculate, Wolf, that the uh, killing of these uh, seven IRGC, Iran Islamic Revolutionary Guard Command uh, commanders, would provoke the kind of overwhelming uh, uh, attack that they successfully uh, stopped and intercepted last weekend. And uh, it's great that everybody's taking a breather now, but think about where we are now versus a week ago. For the first time in 45 years since the Islamic Revolution, we have seen a direct attack from Iranian territory on Israel and a small but direct attack in response. That's a new world and a new place. And while I completely agree with Susan that everybody is now taking a breather, maybe scared by what they had begun to go do, I also think that the restraint, the taboo is now gone. And that worries me because I think there's every chance that the Iranian reaction to this will be to double down on the nuclear program. Yeah, we shall see. That could be so, so disturbing. Susan, an Italian official says the United States was, quote, informed at the last minute by the Israelis about the attack overnight on Iran. What do you make of that? Well, I was struck by how much uh, the Americans were not wanting to get into the middle of this story. They were, uh, you know, not even providing, I would say, the usual uh, at least background uh, confirmation to American journalists. Yes, indeed, these strikes happened. They really wanted uh, the Israelis, it seems to me, to to own this in a way, especially because they had been so public in the days leading up to it in their advice to the Netanyahu government to essentially avoid escalating the situation even further and perhaps even holding off striking altogether. So I think there's a real desire here in Washington on the part of the administration not to be uh, in the middle of this uh, round of retaliation and striking between Israel and Iran. But of course, you know, it, that doesn't, that's quality. a distinction perhaps without a difference in Tehran, which views the United States and, and Israel as, as intertwined partners. David, uh, Jordan's foreign minister just told my colleague Jim Shudo, the Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is, quote, benefiting from the recent escalation in the Middle East. Do you agree? Yeah, there's certainly an argument to be made uh, along those lines. Well, think about it. Uh, a, a week ago before this time, he was facing an angry president of the United States who was threatening vaguely to put conditions on the aid and uh, particularly the arms that the United States provides to Israel if they didn't open up more aid to, um, to Gaza, if they didn't allow the convoys to safely make their way in. I think the killing of those aid workers, you know, deeply angered Biden. This has completely changed the conversation. Important. Uh, David Sanger and Susan Glasser to both of you. Thank you very much. And once again, David's new book is entitled New Cold Wars. There's the cover.